So basically, this is also um, my first time, I can say, doing a keynote, like, you know, like speaking uh, in public, I can say. So I used to talk with Isaac Flannery, and right now it is one of the challenging experience. So thank you, Susita, <laughs> the president of Isaac in Sri Lanka for the opportunity, basically. So shall we start or we just like wait for another people to join? We'll start. Let's see uh, other people are joining. It's fine. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm preparing quite a long presentation, so I hope that it is not exceeding the time given. <laughs> I'll try to make it fast. So if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat uh, first so I can uh, directly answer the questions uh, right away during my presentations or after I finish the presentation. So. Once again, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm really happy to be here. It's been a honor to see all of you. Um, I don't know, last time I'm doing this public uh, keynote was um, maybe, I don't know, three months ago. So it, it is uh, quite um, challenging also for me. Um, yes, and then my name is Cassie Sumbiring. You can call me Cassie. I am 24 years old, um, yeah, quite years old. <laughs> And then I was studying architecture design. So a lot of people saying that um, it is not aligned with what I'm doing right now in the organizations, especially I see that focus on uh, social issues, social matters, people development and so on. But I found it is really uh, interesting to, you know, like somehow learning something that you never learned in campuses or studying uh, formal. Um, so yeah, there is a little bit story behind that also. I'm from Indonesia for sure. I believe that this map it's not complete because Indonesia is not only three uh, islands, but yeah, uh, this is the position around the world, uh, Indonesia. And then uh, today I'll be um, talking um, about several topics uh, related to COVID-19 and the pandemic uh, in Indonesia. Nice to meet you too, Aladdin. <laughs> Okay, uh, there will be three topics that I will bring today. The first one is the current conditions uh, in Indonesia uh, during pandemic. And then I will share a little bit about the storyline of COVID-19 starting from the outbreak uh, early um, 2020 and what uh, the effects of it. And then uh, on how our government, our people dealing with the COVID-19 situation in Indonesia. Uh, yes, I will cover a little bit topic about health and then economic recovery uh, in our country also as uh, two big um, concerns in two big top, uh, sorry, areas or uh, sectors that we want to uh, focus on during this pandemic also as well. So hopefully you will got uh, all things that you need uh, during the presentations as well. Uh, so I hope that you are doing great. <laughs> it's nice. It, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you uh, during online, and then we can actually doing something that is bigger compared to ourselves when we had everything physically, right? So it's a great thing. It is the positive sides of uh, COVID nineteen. Um, so how Indonesia deal with COVID-19? First of all, I'll um, take you to the overall current conditions in Indonesia right now. This is the chart you can see that we have a very huge cases uh, in January and February. And right now it is decreasing a lot. Uh, I can say that it is significant cases drop after vaccine. So we start the vaccinations um, early on March, but uh, it is, how do I say, like launch to the citizen of Indonesia uh, on, on April. So, but still the cases is 4,000. So it is scary maybe compared to your country. Um, it's a huge number, I know. Uh, during the peak, the highest peak was in uh, 14,000 uh, cases. So it is quite a lot, right? Um, and then also uh, I got these information from the official um, information that is provided uh, on Google and also um, uh, from Indonesian government. And then because Indonesia has like more than one island only, we have like several islands like uh, AB islands in um, several small islands. And then geogra geographically, um, we are very uh, different from one city to another city. So we have like around five big cities uh, in Indonesia. And then it is reflecting on the cases also as well, because those five uh, cities are also um, the most populated uh, cities. If you can see 
Of course, the capital city of Indonesia, Jakarta, is um, the highest cases funded, uh, if you see here. Um, and I can say the most effective province are big cities with big number of populations also as well. Uh, it, uh, it affects also the regulations on how we tap COVID-19, on how we deal with COVID-19 in every city also as well. So when I, went, uh, I will go through the um, steps that our government provides to tackle uh, this pandemic, not to tackle, to deal with this pandemic, quite different in every cities. But I will take uh, some example, uh, for example, in big cities that I am in right now in Jakarta, uh, most of the regulations are implemented here because this is uh, one of the big cities. Uh, just uh, giving you a little bit context uh, on uh, on how so many uh, different regulations that is happening in Indonesia because uh, this um, because this ge geographic um, condition in Indonesia is so different also as well. Uh, but uh, but I can say overall one thing for sure that helped us a lot, uh, the citizen of um, Indonesia, is because we have a very uh, accessible information, and then it is part of the most important things when it comes to COVID nineteen and how we deal with that. So the awareness, uh, the citizen aware about the cases. Uh, is very, very important, especially um, some tips and tricks on how to, to um, deal with it, uh, on how you can access um, also, uh, for example, opportunities right now, uh, the opportunities to job, to work is very limited. So if, uh, if, if our government provide like uh, one uh, national portal where people can access any potential job applications would be better also as well. So anything related to the um, uh, COVID-19 um, effects will be very, very, how do we say, useful or yeah, useful for the citizen of Indonesia. And then all of those, um, especially uh, about the development of um, the COVID-19 itself, you can find in COVID-19.co.id in Indonesia. So this is our official government website. So website is very accessible and then all of the, the data and information are updated. So I use also this uh, website to get some data that I present to you. And then also uh, in our country, it is really easy to, how do I say, to get people attention from social media, uh, to reach active social media users, especially youth uh, by um, use, the, uh, use um, Instagram, for example, Facebook, or even TikTok. So government trying to, to reach uh, more and more people. That is um, most of us like spend our time in social media, right? So we have also official government social media where we can access every data related to it. Uh, and then especially if there is a new regulations, they also use social media. Uh, they create a campaign on how to make sure people are aware about the new changing uh, regarding regulations that is happening. Um, yes, I will go through the storyline on how COVID-19 um, happened in Indonesia. The first one is um, on March 2020. Uh, this is our first outbreak, you can say. Uh, but the first case is not on March, but in February 2020. Uh, but the first outbreak where we have like more than, um, more than 100 cases was in March. Uh, and then uh, from April to August, there is, I can say, um, quite strict social restrictions. Uh, our government still define what kind of things that we need to um, use to, um, to tackle, um, how do we say, the spread of the COVID-19. And then in January, in January, it is the peak uh, of the um, highest number um, cases, I can say. It is because also that is, um, holiday season, especially for Christmas and New Year. So in Indonesia, people used to go to their hometown in this season. So uh, our governments try to strict regulations, but some people are still able to manage travel inside the country that make the cases up to 14,000 cases per day. So it's very scary. Um, and then on April, uh, I can say the first vaccine was in March 2021, but April it is spread out to our citizens, starting from the elderly people first, 
uh, especially me, I already got the vaccines, the first vaccines. Um, so it will continue in, to, um, in the next two months to get the second vaccine. So it is already implemented or some of the citizens already receive it, especially in the big cities uh, on April, starting uh, April 2021. And then in May, um, also because we have like high season of holiday for Eid Mubarak season. So uh, right now the regulations uh, traveling inside the country is, um, uh, is strengthened, strengthened also. So there is a very strict regulation right now. So most of people need to stay uh, in their, um, how do you say, in their, um, in their own city rather than go to their home um, hometown uh, during during this May. So I can say it will be continued not only because of the high season, but it will the new regulations updated will be uh, implemented for the next months also as well, uh, because. Uh, Right now, our cases is, um, decrease a lot because of that. So uh, since the very beginning, we never completely locked down our country. So it is a partially locked down. Uh, so people can still do, um, how do I say, do activities inside the city. But to move to another city will be need, an, uh, how do I say, street regulations. Uh, if you are going to work, so it is, uh, it will be approved. But if it, if it is not related to work or study, uh, or business matters, you will not allow to go to another city, especially during the holiday season. It will be very, very strict um, uh, with the regulations. Uh, so this is one of our government strategy. So it's called PSPB. So we call it like, uh, in English, we call it large scale social restrictions. Um, the first time we implement this, you can see this is Jakarta and no one's in the road even because uh, it is really hard to go to another city or doing, you know, a travel inside the country. And then the first one we implement this, the main target is only five big cities in Indonesia. Uh, before December regulations is implemented in the other province also as well in normal days without occasions or holiday seasons. Um, and then also PSBB uh, is strictly applicable in all provinces without exceptions during high season for holiday. Um, yeah, in high seasons, because uh, a lot of people will travel to smaller village or smaller city because that is their hometown, for example. So it is applicable not only in the big city anymore, but in all province, in all cities, small or big. Uh, but we can see that we still have like a lot of blind spot or, or lack of, you know, like tracking uh, the implementations of the strategy. Uh, like, you know, like some of the local authorities is not strict enough to implement and control the PSB regulations in some small cities. Uh, even if the cases is low, but uh, actually we need to implement this to the fullest, but somehow we, we got like some blind spot, some cities are still lack of, you know, like, um, how do we say? lack of uh, tracking the implementations of it. So we should you know, like work more on this. And then as a youth, I think uh, this is something that we always need to uh, spread to, you know, like another young people out there to really obey the regulations that our government try to um, spread to us also as well. Uh, and then what happened after that, uh, after the outbreak, uh, like even until now, I can say school and university activities shifted to online-based learning since then, uh, but expected to be open early next year. Uh, and then work from home for most of the companies and small medium enterprises, especially in the big cities. Some of the small cities, they still uh, have like from work from office, but it needs to be hybrid. So it cannot be fully work from office but it need to be hybrid between work from home and work from office. So government really pushed this uh, in the highest peak of COVID-19 especially. And then a huge number of layoffs in private companies, sectors also ha happening, social sectors are highly affected, um, especially in young people, mental health uh, deterioration and youth uh, disillusionment also like on how you really, really dis disappointed with the time where they cannot explore anything anymore, right? So these four things are mainly uh, the effect of this, um, this pandemic as well. And then also in November, uh, we face our first recessions uh, in, in the last two decades. Um, as I told you that there's a lot of, a huge number of layoffs. So basically around 3.5 million people have lost their job due to the pandemic crisis in Indonesia. 
So it's very scary. So that's why our government have a very strict um, strategy on how we can recover in terms of economic and also health also as well. Uh, so this is the main um, issues that our government trying to tackle right now. Uh, with this strategy, we call it 3M Treaty. Um, this is basically about uh, the health, the, um, the health uh, inside the citizens. Uh, it is about social distancing, put on a mask and then washing hands. And then the, on how we, we're testing more and more people every day, how we're tracing them after they get tested. And then the treatment, including the facility improvement uh, from our government is also provided. And then the second is we have like national economic recovery program uh, that is already launched since last year. And then three focus business sector is SME, small medium enterprises. We give them subside, uh, subsidies, incentive in taxes and everything. And then also corporate, we uh, our government give them incentive taxes. And then also um, state owned enterprises, um, state equity participations and so on. There's a lot of uh, these three uh, business actors is uh, the main focus on how we can recover um, in terms of economic uh, in the country. Uh, and then in 2021, the program budget has uh, has increased. Uh, that is a good a good thing. And then our four uh, for focuses sector in Indonesia is of course whole like free vaccinations programs, and then social protections including social assistance program, and then pre employment card for all of the um, fresh graduate student and the lay off uh, employee. Uh, and then some of the electricity bill discount also as well, and the national priority program like food waste, tourism, and also information communication technology, uh, and also uh, in, in the banking sectors also as well. Yes, uh, beside those two strategy, uh, it is also good for our government right now to strengthen in the PSBB, the large scale restrictions. Uh, as I told you, it is still happening even after the Eid Mubarak holiday. It is still happening up until now, uh, the regulations. And then also as a youth, it is important for us to spread awareness and knowledge as young people, like on how we are, can, on how we can create interactive dialogue about the topic, on how we can give uh, resolutions toward it. We held a webinar and seminars uh, on how we provide information portal and uh, or. Uh, in order for them to take actions to support our government regulations. And then in Indonesia, uh, especially a lot of young people trying um, to provide more and more uh, reliable information by creating portal, they have become a youth activist in terms of this and how they are also support and becoming a volunteer to help our government. And then this is something that we are doing in ISEC also as, as well, especially in ISEC in Indonesia. Um, one of them is of course, like creating youth a crack creating an interactive dialogue is one of the um, things that we can do as a youth. And then in Indonesia itself, we are, pro, uh, we are creating a community where young people can really uh, discuss about this topic. Uh, we, talk, we talk a lot uh, about uncommon topics like knowing your mental well-being, mental health and everything where they can actually uh, can, you know, like talk about this really with the other people. So, and then also we are mm, how, trying to um, spread awareness also in terms of financial investment, for example, an uncommon topic to people uh, to help them to, to understand uh, what, what they need to focus on starting right now to prepare their self also in the future. Um, so I can say that because of that also, we can see some positive things that we got during pandemic because of that. Mm, Young people more aware about their mental, uh, their health, including mental health, of course, and how uh, it is important to take care of themselves. Uh, and then we can see also like some popular trends that is happening that is shaped by the current conditions that we have, that young people have a high interest in investment sector during this pandemic. So they have like a very huge desire, uh, you know, like on self-drive uh, learning um, is very increased, especially in an uncommon topic. Uh, that we have before pandemic and then creative young people um, are increasing too they are very uh, proactive uh, to learn about business acumen more entrepreneurship um, also as well and then more and uh, more and more young people is aware of the importance of their career preparations earlier because less job opportunities will require more skillful uh, young talent in the future so i think it's pretty good also to have like a good news um beside the uh, bad news 
because of COVID-19 as well. And I hope that many more to go happening in Indonesia and I hope in your country also as well. I think that's all. I think uh, <laughs> that's all from me. I hope that it is uh, informative enough for you. But um, yeah, let's connect with me. And then if you have any questions, I think uh, we still have time uh, to uh, question and answer, right? Or you need to change to another room. Nice, I can see some comments. <laughs> I love Kopilua coffee. I, I love Kopilua coffee. Never try it and want to visit Bali. Even in Sri Lanka, school and university has transformed into online platforms such as using Zoom Maps and Microsoft Team. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. Do you have any questions? I can answer one or two, maybe. Okay, I think it is quite clear for you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Okay, OC. Kalani, are you an OC, right? I'm from OC. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe we can go another round, but we only have seven more minutes. So oh, okay, okay, okay. So I present it once again. Uh, it's up to you if you want to present again. Yeah, we can do it because we have seven more minutes, but we only have seven more minutes then again. Ah, okay, okay. I will go through it because I think new people joining, right? Yeah, new people are joining. Ah, okay. I will make it fast. I'm trying. <laughs> Hi, you guys. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> I'm really trying to make it fast. Okay, hi everyone. So my name is Cassie. I am 24 years old and I am from Indonesia. Yay. I hope that you guys are doing great uh, today and I'm really excited to see you uh, and then your proactiveness <laughs> to join this kind of event is very, mm, very good. Okay, so I will tell you a little bit about current condition in Indonesia. So this is... Um, I can say the current conditions. And then we have the highest cases on January or February 2021. And then it is decreased a, a lot uh, in this May because of vaccine. So vaccination is happening in Indonesia starting from um, March and April 2021. Um, and then also I can say this is the storylines of the outbreak, COVID-19 outbreak in Indonesia. We face it first on March 2020. And then from April to August, we have a very strict social restrictions. And then January is the highest peak of the cases. We, uh, it is up to 14,000 um, cases. It is because um, we have a strict regulations, but because it, it is a holiday season. So there's a lot of people doing, you know, like traveling inside the country. And then that is how uh, the, the COVID-19 spread very, very fast. And then starting from March to April, we have vaccine vaccination starting uh, from April. But even me, I already uh, got the vaccines uh, until now. So quite lucky because of that. So it is decreased a lot, the cases because of the vaccine, I can see. So in the next holiday, the Eid Mubarak holiday that is happening now, like last week, uh, the cases is uh, very less, or lesser compared to um, the holiday seasons before it that we have early on 2021. But still, the cases is still huge. <laughs> 4,800 is a huge cases, but it is lesser, uh, lesser. We hope that it can be lesser, lesser every day until we achieve zero, I hope. Um, and then since the very beginning, we never completely locked down our country. So um, inside the country, we, all, uh, we only implement partially lockdown. Um, so we try to really manage on how people are doing, you know, like traveling inside the country. And then we cannot really do any, um, how do I say, traveling abroad uh, activities. Uh, if it is not related to your study, to business matters or to education or, or, or for job or work matter. So you will not allow to go even to another city in Indonesia. 
especially in the holiday season, it's really hard to, you know, like go to your hometown because the regulation is quite strict. We call it PSBB. PSBB is a large scale social restrictions. So it is implemented mainly in the big uh, cities in normal days. But during holiday season, it will be implemented in all provinces uh, without exceptions. But still, uh, there's a lot of blind, spot, blind spots in implementing this, like some local authorities is not strict enough to implement and control the PSBB regulations uh, because they feel that the case is slow, so that's okay. But this is something that we really need, uh, really need to take it forward. Um, and then what happened uh, because of that, school and university activities shifted to online fully and then work from home for most of the companies and SME um, is implemented or hybrid um, work from office and work from home also happening in some small cities. And then huge number of layoff, um, layoffs in private companies are happening also as well. And then mental health deteriorations and some the disillusionment, like disappointment by young people because they don't have any opportunity to learn more from the other activities that they used to have during, you know, like when we when we can do everything physically. And then in November 2020, this is our first recession in 20 years. Um, like, you know, like 3.5 million people have lost their job due to the pandemic crisis. So it's a very huge crisis happening. Therefore, our government trying to have like two major strategy, focus on uh, health and also economic recovery. Uh, this is one of our government strategy. So, uh, talk about 3M and 3T. It is talking about social distancing, wasn't hands, and then the treaty is uh, we are focusing testing more and more people every day, and then we trace them and then give them treatment if you are um, positive of COVID-19. So facility improvement are happening too, tracing system improvement also happening. And then also the second part is talking about the recovery, um, economic recovery. We have program basically, and then this is the three uh, main business actors. A small medium enterprises, corporate and state-owned enterprises. So we push our economic recovery from the sectors. And then the budget increase in this year, that is good. Um, and then the four focus sectors are hold, social protections. Uh, hold this, we have like free vaccinations program and then social protections, of course, we have like free employment cards. So basically government uh, um, send us money uh, if we haven't got any job after we are graduate from university in this year uh, and also if you got laid off so it's very good program and then national priority program like food estate tourism uh, technology and some banking um, sectors also as well therefore we are still strengthening our regulations the large-scale social restrictions until now uh, and then also as in young people uh, for us rather than uh, beside having those and support government to implement the strategy, we think that um, uh, we think that we need to spread the awareness and knowledge as young people to many more people, especially our our maid or our friends um, on how we can create an interactive dialogue, we can create webinars, seminars, um, we can share information, or we can even create information portal uh, for them to take actions to support our government regulations. This is something that we currently doing as young people in Indonesia. Especially what I say can do, one of them is of course this event. I think youth, um, Youthquake is one of the best platform or best even on how we can you know like hear more perspective from the other country on how they are tackling their um their uh their conditions caused by uh COVID-19 as well in ISA in Indonesia itself we are building a very strong community on how we can talking a lot about you know like about the cases related to COVID-19 the effect of COVID-19 like mental health and everything so uh, I can say that we can still see the light because of COVID-19. So these are four positive things that uh, we can see in Indonesia itself. So a lot of uh, more young people were about their mental health. And then uh, young people have a high interest in investment sector during pandemic because they have a very huge discernment to learn. And then creative young people, uh, they are very proactive learning about business acumen more, entrepreneurship, and then building their own small medium enterprises or startup, they're very um, proactive in terms of that. And more in, uh, and more and more young people is aware of the importance of their career preparations. 
because lesser job opportunities will require more uh, skillful young talent in the future, right? So it's a good thing that young people are currently proactive in preparing themselves for the future. Thank you.